All right. You want me to ask? No, I know. You want me to ask? Hold on, hold on. Oh, right, Reggie. If that's oh. your question, do you oh. want me to honestly answer it? Yeah, yeah, I've heard this. Yes. Sure. Because I'm trying to protect you from yourself here. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. We did talk to you, Reggie, and it's documented. Okay. Why? Why didn't you ever come knocking on my door and and and, and talk to me? You, you saw the three hundred twos on me before. Right? You know that I was on open book, cooperate. Why you never came? And I said, hey, Reggie, I want to talk to you. Stop, stop it right there. What I'm is a 302? A 302 is an informant interview. When they do, when the FBI takes a statement from, a, from an informant. Now, could they be a paid informant? Maybe. If they're not, it could be a witness interview. But at the end of the day, a 302 is an FBI. That's the number, the serial number for the document itself. Okay. It's a form 302. When you make that, they take a statement from somebody and somebody gives them information and they document it on a 302. So that means that Reggie Wright Jr.'s name is on a bunch of 302s. And that's why he said, you saw the 302s on me. I cooperate. Okay. Okay. Now, last time I checked, Suge Knight ain't cooperated with anybody. Okay. Last time I checked, Trayvon Lane has not cooperated with anybody. Okay. I, Keith Davis cooperates with everybody. So I don't know what to make of that. <laughs> but... but there are cats out there that don't cooperate. That's right. how they roll. They, right. That's their code. They don't cooperate. Right. What else do you call it when the police come a knocking at your door, knockity knock knock, we're the police, we got some questions and some information for you. Oh, yeah, here, I'll cooperate. What else do you call that? All right. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, you could say, okay, you're a concerned citizen, but I think you kind of lost that battle being a concerned citizen when you end up being a convicted money launderer and drug dealing felon. You lose that privilege. You lose that status of being John Q. Concerned when you tell Frank Alexander to lie about a chain to the Vegas cops. When you impede and interfere in an investigation of Vegas police by making people from death row unavailable. Meanwhile, you're trying to push Orlando Anderson through Tim Brennan and Bobby Ladd, and you're cooperating with that. Meanwhile, your goal, your job, is to keep everybody away that Vegas police can't talk to, okay? And get Yafu Fool in New Jersey for some reason in the middle of all this, okay? <clears throat> your job, and the Vegas police, Brent Becker was very clear when I interviewed him about it. Anytime they had anybody interviewed, Reggie Wright Jr. had to be there at that interview with them. You know who else said that? The attorney for the Shakur estate, okay, when they went from the, in New York, when they did the depositions, whenever they would depose anybody from death row, Reggie Wright insisted on being there for that deposition. He had to be in the room with them, okay? That's who, that's, that's, That's how, such a sign of guilt to make sure nobody well, say anything you don't want them to say. Well, you know, it's, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever reason you want to be. It wasn't just Vegas police that said Reggie Wright Jr. When they said, hey, Malcolm Greenidge and Frank Alexander can identify Orlando Anderson. Reggie's begging him on the phone. Come on, maybe that picture will refresh in your memory, you know, make you think it was Orlando Anderson. He's like, no, it's not. You know, no, it's not. I didn't I see that. So he gets, he tells, David Kenner tells Vegas PD that Frank Alexander, Malcolm Greenidge knew, could identify the shooter, which was Orlando Anderson, according to them. Okay. Malcolm Greenidge goes up there and he says, I can't identify anybody. That's right. But Reggie Wright Jr. is the one that brought him to that interview. Okay. Mm. You tell me. Okay. Now you can. And that, that's EDI that. mean, correct? Yeah. EDI don't mean. Yes, that's correct. Okay. <laughs> When 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 you when you are bringing people to interviews, you could say, "Well, I'm the only responsible one of the bunch, and the only way those cats were ever going to get to the police is if I physically took them there." Okay, you could say that. You could make that argument. Okay, but when there's a bunch of other shady shit going on, and you're in charge of the situation, then no, there's too many other too many other things. You lose that right. 
again, when you try to play both sides of the fence, on the one hand, you got the former cop, upstanding citizen, do the right thing, do I, and then you got this dirt side, okay? You got this side over here who's telling Frank to lie, who's telling people to do things, who's who's <clears throat> who's part of that whole problem, okay? Now, when you have that, you kind of lose the privilege of taking the moral high ground, okay, in my opinion, okay? So you can make fun of you all day long and make fun of me all day long. I, me? I've never been I've never been busted for money laundering and drug dealing in my life. Okay? Right. I don't I haven't been busted for that. So, you know, it's 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 a um it's one of those things where <clears throat> the stories are just crazy. That I mean, that's the best way I can explain it. The stories are just crazy. You know, Frank was a good dude. Frank got put in a real pissy position and then Reggie turned around once he told him not to testify that he needed to avoid getting a subpoena served. See, this is what I'm talking about. On the one hand, you got somebody saying, oh, I was cooperating. I was cooperating. On the other hand, you got somebody telling Frank Alexander, if you can avoid getting subpoenaed, you should be fine. OK. Right. You tell him to avoid process service. Oh, and to see Reggie Rice says, I've been busted. I've been busted for fraud and writing bad checks. Well, actually, <laughs> I was arrested for writing a bad check in Is that right back... for real? Oh, I'm sure it well, I'm sure it is because he's the only one that could get things so wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that you know, that's what Phil Carson kept saying. He kept saying, Yo, do not block him, moderators do not block pork butt. Leave them in. No, here. don't do that. Don't do that. We're gonna have some fun with this because let's wrap. Let's let let's hey, get hey, Reggie, it out there. Can I, drop the, can I drop the link for you, Reggie? Reggie, can I drop the link? You want to come on? Oh, I gotta go in a minute link. here. I gotta go in a minute here. You want to do that? Do it another time. I, you know, uh, okay. My, all right. What I have, Wait. what I have to say to him is, but here's the thing. He said, "I've been busted for fraud." Okay. Right. Here we go. Fraud. I never been busted for fraud in my life, okay? And the case was dismissed on the bad check, so I wasn't convicted of it. Unlike you, who are convicted of money laundering, who were convicted of drug dealing, you can minimize it all you want to, okay? Right. You can minimize it all you want to. Again, make excuses after the fact. That's what you're good at. Make excuses after the fact. The excuse channel. Bomb wait, first wait. excuse channel. <laughs> hey, wait, before you before you go, I got I gotta get uh see get let me play this real quick. Hold on. Hold on. It's been like five minutes since we did a live stream. Are you up to doing another? Veggie. We got a ping from one of our real subscribers. Veggie? Yeah, at least I'm not typing it under my 10 aliases. He asked if you were the head of security for like a multi-million dollar record company or something like that. Veggie. He says you were also friends with the owner who had like a ton of cash. So, I have to ask you, dude, didn't like a bunch of people die in like 24 hours while you were in charge? Veggie. Okay, maybe a few then. But Tupac died while you ran security. You actually got a paycheck after that day. Veggie. But how come no one was mad at you? Weren't there all those tough gang guys there? They were all ganged up and would kill someone for saying the wrong thing. Honestly, dude, how come no one ever shot you for not making sure all those guys didn't get shot or killed? Veggie. Yeah, I know you are in a chair and can't walk or use your hands. I read the lawsuit you filed last year, but you said it was COVID, not some gang guy that put you in a chair. Veggie. Wasn't your friend shot? Wasn't he mad? Veggie. He wasn't mad. 
Man, if my friend dropped the ball like that, I'd want some payback. Betsy, Betsy. Frank was the guy you called at the last minute, according to your interviews. Betsy. But you didn't have many guys on anyone that night. You had like 200 cops and guards at the club. But only one dude you called at the last minute on your biggest earner? You didn't plan very well if you let the guy you didn't want working until the last minute. But what I don't understand is that for like 20 years, you've said nothing but nasty things about Frank. It said Frank lied about being a cop. Didn't you do a background check on the guy? Veggie. But dude, either you backgrounded him and knew he was not a cop and let him guard away, or you didn't do a check on him and let the guy you didn't check out be a last moment fill in on one of the most busy days in Las Vegas. No offense, dude, but where did you learn to run a security company? Veggie. But yeah, I can stand in the middle of a ballet, but it doesn't make me a ballerina. <laughs> wow. Uh, I guess <laughs> you got to come back on cuz I know you got a, a previous engagement and stuff but uh wow. Look at that. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd heard that been bouncing around for a while. Uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Oh, I think the part where he spun around in the wheelchair got me. I, that was the that was the damn funniest thing I'd ever seen. But you know, 